in the small intestine, there's the same cysteine transporter is present, but it doesn't appear that cysteine transport in the, in, the, uh, in the intestine is so critical. And the reason why is because small peptides, small uh, groups of amino acids, as an example, if you had cysteine, arginine, and tryptophan, in other words, three amino acids strung together into a little tiny chain, a, a tr this would be called a tripeptide, they can be reabsorbed through peptide transporters. So the, the concern that people have are people with cystinuria not reabsorbing cysteine. There, there are <coughs> abnormalities in cysteine transport that are measurable in the intestine, but it d turns out that cysteine transport is not completely critical because there are other ways of reabsorbing cysteine from the food that you eat. Tripeptides, as an example, small peptides are reabsorbed. So even if the intestine is lacking a cysteine transporter, there's other ways that cysteine can get reabsorbed, and so people tend not to be cysteine deficient. And the evidence that people with cysteine, who are losing cysteine in the urine have some deficiency of cysteine is quite sparse and unconvincing. Next. So the problem is simply that cysteine is poorly soluble in the urine. You're losing this cysteine, and the, the simple problem here is that we have a molecule that turns out not to be easily dissolved. And so these cysteine crystals, those six-sided uh, crystals that we can see commonly in the urine, uh, turn into those stones. And the person who gave me that slide is present in the audience today, and I appreciate that uh, contribution. One year worth of uh, small cysteine stones. Next. So the solution to this problem is to try to make the cysteine dissolve. In other words, it's to try to prevent this very precipitatable amino acid from precipitating. So here's the, here's the options for doing so, okay? We can increase the solubility of cysteine, and the major way to do this is to increase the pH of the urine, the alkalinization. We can also decrease the concentration of cysteine so that there's less of it, it should precipitate less. We're going to increase the urine volume, so that's basically taking in more liquid and decreasing the amount of cysteine in the urine will achieve the same sort of thing. And then if we could change the cysteine into cysteine, which is very soluble and does not precipitate, we'd also accomplish the goal. So these are the, the three things that I'll talk about in terms of management. What is pH? pH is a measure of the amount of acid in a solution. And the lower the pH, the more acid the solution is. The higher the pH, the less acid is present. Each pH unit is 10 times as much acid. If it goes down, if you've got water as a pH of 7, as an example, urine, a usually a 24-hour urine pH is around 6. 6 is 10 times as acid as 7. 5 is 10 times as acid as 6, or 100 times as acid as 7. If you go from 7 to 8, then you've got one-tenth as much acid in the urine. So that's an idea of what pH is, and many of you have measured your urine pH. Uh, and have some sense of, uh, of what, you, what you'd like your urine pH to be. And acids are neutralized by bases. So if you want the urine to be less acid, you have to provide a base. And the base that we're usually going to talk about is bicarbonate, which is in the urine. And the way of getting bicarbonate into the urine usually is to take citrate. I have no financial relationship with Eurocit K. Um, but that's your potassium citrate. So if you want to increase the pH of the urine, the simplest way to do it is to take base. The other way to do it is to eat less acid. And where do you eat acid? In the no course of a normal diet, it's animal protein that provides sulfuric acid, some phosphoric acid. These are the protons, the H plus, that, you, that basically represent acid. And if you eat less protein, then you're generating less acid. And that's going to make it easier for you to alkalinize the urine. But more frequently, effectively, you need to take base. And the usual base that you can take is bicarbonate or citrate. Potassium bicarbonate, an example of that is chlorcon EF. The EF is effervescent. It bubbles as you put it into a glass of water. Or potassium citrate as well. Potassium citrate, polycitric K, eurocit K. The citrate is a base. It's going to be metabolized, though, into a bicarbonate, and that's going to appear in the urine. 
Urosid-K usually comes in 10 milliequivalent pills, 10 milliequivalents of potassium, or 10 milliequivalents <coughs> of, uh, of citrate, and that's equivalent to 1,080 milligrams uh, of potassium citrate. Next slide. You can also increase the pH with sodium citrate or sodium bicarbonate. So baking soda is simply sodium bicarbonate, and that's another inexpensive way of alkalinizing the urine. And there are lots of brands of sodium citrate as well, citra pH and bicitra, polycitra K, uh, polycitra, not polycitra K, are all sodium citrates. But usually, we prefer to use potassium salts and not sodium salts. Some people are taking sodium bicarbonate or sodium citrate, but potassium has the following advantages. Number one, sodium, as I'll show you, is associated with more cysteine in the urine. So we would prefer not to use sodium from that point of view. So potassium will be associated with less cysteine in the urine. There's also the possibility, particularly if you're alkalinizing the urine, it's possible to have calcium stones, specifically calcium phosphate stones. And as you take in more sodium, more salt, and excrete more sodium, there's also going to be more calcium in the urine. That's not true for potassium. So it's another advantage of potassium salt. And then, of course, salt or sodium is associated with increased blood pressure in some people. Uh, it's certainly, if you're older and have heart problems, then salt is definitely uh, something that needs to be avoided. So we almost always prefer uh, potassium salts. The disadvantage of the potassium salts is that potassium is often associated with some of the GI side effects that people have when they take potassium citrate or pota potassium bicarbonate. Sometimes people tolerate the sodium citrate better. Uh, and that's the biggest advantage. You can also have too much potassium in your blood. And that's very, very infrequent in people with cystinuria. But if your kidney function is diminished, if your GFR is lower, that can be a concern. And particularly now, nephrologists give everybody ACE inhibitors uh, for blood pressure. And that, so if you have blood, high blood pressure, very likely you're taking uh, an ACE inhibitor a drug like lisinopril or enalapril or ramipril, anything with a pril at the end, and those drugs are associated with higher potassiums in the blood. So that, those are situations, again, where we might want to avoid potassium salt and would, might prefer a sodium salt. But mostly, my hand goes to my prescription pad and I would write a prescription for potassium citrate. So pH testing. Uh, basically, the idea of increasing pH is to alkalinize the urine, make it less acid, and dissolve cysteine. And this basically shows you on this curve, I've just drawn a, a very simple line, urinary pH here. And as you go from 7, 6.5 to 7, 7 to 7.5, the solubility of cysteine, its ability to dissolve in water, in urine, increases dramatically. So here's cysteine solubility, how many milligrams of cysteine you could dissolve in a liter uh, of urine, and it increases dramatically at around a pH of 7 or so. So that's generally the goal, is to increase the pH. This is a, uh, on, the, on the upper right hand uh, corner, this is uh, a graph uh, from a paper that uh, John Asplin and I have uh, recently submitted where we looked at, the, many of you uh, sent urine to uh, Litholink and we looked at the uh, results. And that's the, uh, the open symbols are uh, women, the closed symbols are men. And you can see that, here's a, so here's a real, a real uh, graph, the real result of people taking, um, uh, measuring cysteine solubility as John measured it uh, and the effect of pH. And you can see that as pH increases, uh, particularly around the value of 6.5 to 7 to 7.5, there's an increased effect to dissolve more cysteine. Next. 